The Cornwall Coliseum concert was one of four impromptu McCartney performances around the world. Others in London, Naples and Barcelona have resulted in a thriving black market, with tickets changing hands at six or seven hundred pounds a time. Happily, the touts saw little custom at St Austell, but that's because nearly all the 3,000 tickets were snapped up by bona fide fans. The word superstar is a much overused cliché, but there's no doubt that Paul McCartney still retains a tremendous hold on the public affection. And good evening. How are you? How are you? All right. All right. It's 25 years since he was last in Cornwall filming the Magical Mystery Tour, but the adulation seems undiminished by the passing years. Hello, chaps. Paul swept into the Coliseum with wife Linda and children in tow and minutes later was straight into a warm-up with his excellent backing band. After 30 years on the road, you might think Paul's become a little blasé about being on stage. Obviously, there's not quite the adrenaline rush of early days, but he still gets a great kick out of live performances. You can't feel the same about it because, you know, we were just 18-year-old kids, kind of just stepping out into the world, and we'd never been south of Liverpool, basically, you know. Me and George once hitchhiked to Exeter, but that was about <laughs> it, you know, that was like foreign lands. So you can't recapture that, I mean, but uh, I still love playing as much, and that's one of the fun things about this. It is the level of gig we used to do, the smaller gigs, instead of the big, you know, 100,000 and stuff, you know, the big uh, record-breaking things. Um, so that's what I like about it, you know, but uh, I, I still do enjoy it. I think actually playing two people every bit as much as I ever did. In fact, I may even enjoy it a little bit more because I'm a slightly less nervous now than I used to be. Slightly less. How long were you nervous then? Well, with the Beatles, I mean, we, you were nearly always nervous, you know. I, I used to come home and my dad would say, oh, that was good. I said, I was nervous on, on television. So I was so nervous, he said, it didn't show. And it didn't show, I don't think, but we were petrified, you know. There was a time, of course, when you, you refused, well, not refused, you didn't like doing old Beatles material. Yeah. And I know that you now include a few of those hits yeah. in your repertoire. Is that a sign, really, that your perspective has changed when you look back at what was a really insane period in your life, wasn't it? Yeah, the thing about why uh, none of us from the Beatles, once the Beatles broke up, wanted to do Beatles material was we were trying to sort of forge out life after the Beatles, you know. We were trying to figure out what we could do now we weren't in that band anymore. And um, <clears throat> so all of us independently refused to do Beatles stuff. And we all asked to, rather seriously, we like, asked to be called ex beatle please. You know, we were trying to establish that, that we weren't just that. Although, you know, obviously that's the major part of uh, any of our careers. But um, it was really just to try and do something on our own, you know, so. But, but we will be hearing a few Beatles numbers tonight. But yeah, tell but me about the, the new band. They're good to do now. I say then it was... Uh, it was too painful, it was too near the so-called divorce kind of thing, you know, and you just didn't want to do anything that reminded you of the ex-wife kind of thing, you know. Predictably, it was Beatles material like this which raised the biggest cheers at the Coliseum, and older numbers provide the bulk of tonight's special programme on TSW, Unplugged, a 60-minute concert featuring acoustic versions of his earlier hits and more besides. And it's quite difficult to do, actually. So we started rehearsing. We rehearsed for about a couple of weeks. And you've got to stand right by the mic like you always used to have to, you know, because if you wander away, there's no guitar sound anymore. So it's a good discipline. It's harder to play. Electric guitar solos, God, you know, our fingers were like rocks at the end of the two weeks. It was, it was great fun for us. And so we ended up doing old Beatles stuff, old blues stuff, old rock and roll stuff that I liked. Um, so that was really how it came wrote. about. And the first song what I ever read. Which is cool. Oh, it's called I Lost My Little Girl. <laughs> when I was about 14, I wrote, I knew three, four chords. And um, that was the first song I wrote around about then. And it seemed like a good uh, time to do it, because I didn't want to do it anywhere else, because anywhere else you're supposed to be being serious. So this show was kind of informal, so I thought, well, I'll slip it in on this. And it went down well, and we ended up with an album from it. Tonight's programme also includes a few anthems from a past age. But for Paul McCartney, the renewed interest in 60s music is simply reflecting a swing back to an older philosophy. Since the 60s, in my idea, in my view, nothing much has happened. Except kind of Thatcher's Britain and yuppiedom and stuff. And I don't think that's like a, a new philosophy. I think that's a very old philosophy, all that. So I think like a lot of the things like uh, environment, 
peace, that kind of stuff, you know, trying to get on with each other personally. I think that still is the best philosophy. So in the 90s, I see it reappearing, you know. I think it's something to do with that as well, not just the music. Paul, it's great to see you here. Thanks very much indeed for talking to us. Great. Thanks. Looks and sounds good. I would have loved to have gone to that concert, you know. Absolutely superb. The best thing was the last number we did, um, Sergeant Pepper, with an instrumental lead section. It was absolutely superb. Oh, I envy you anyway.